we've always been and continue to be uh, a family business. I run the business with my two daughters and we have a couple of uh, part-time people who do packaging and other miscellaneous things that need to be done. I'm not out there banging on doors anymore looking for for new clients, you know, it's it's steady and I'm content with that. I still enjoy what I'm doing. It's uh, something I've always liked and I, I consider myself very lucky to uh, after all these years be doing something that I enjoy and uh, so I'm very content with that. This goes back to the beginnings of, of the vinyl format. This is the way it's always been done. You know, it, it looks like a record. As I mentioned before, it's not it's an aluminum disc that's metal. That's aluminum you're seeing there. Mm -hmm. And the black part is cellulose acetate. They can etch or cut grooves into it mm -hmm. using a heated stylus. And, uh, and that's what makes the original master disc, master lacquer, sometimes called acetate. Uh, it goes off to a processing plant that does nickel electroplating and uh, to, to make what we refer to as stampers and mothers. Uh, the stampers, as they're called, then become a negative or reverse image of the master lacquer, which is a positive, and that stamper being a negative is what actually comes back here to the pressing plant and uh, is used to go in the record presses and make the records. And this is, uh, this is one side of a seven inch 45 that's ready to go in the press where you've got an A side and a B side you know and the vinyl and the label goes in the middle the press closes squish you know all the material is PVC polyvinyl chloride it's plastic and now it's specially formulated and compounded for phonograph records it has to be capable of being molded into a certain form, shape, uh, but, but there are many other factors that are even more important because it's got to turn out a product that is quiet. In the machine it, uh, it starts out, uh, like I say, in pellet form and uh, it's heated and formed into a shape which kind of looks like a, an oversized hockey puck. That's the size, shape that's needed to go into the press and mold a phonograph record. That's what a seven inch phonograph record looks like before it became a record. After this cools and becomes hard again, it's as hard as a rock, you wouldn't want to get hit in the teeth with it. Together with a label for each side of the record, a side A label, side B label, uh, We'll now go into the press. The press closes on it, and the record is molded using uh, steam heat in excess of 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And after several seconds of heating, it's cooled with cold water. As you can see, it, uh, it comes out of the press before that happens, the outside diameter is trimmed. That outside flash or excess material looks like this. Makes a good halo. People come in here all the time and when they ask what we do, I usually suggest they sit down before I tell them, you know, that, that we make vinyl phonograph records. And of course the obvious question becomes, well, who uses them? You know, who needs them? Where, where are they sold? Alpha Records, by the way, has been in business uh, since 65, so this is our 40th year in business, so I figured I must be doing something right. I, I can tell you a quick story. When uh, I mentioned back in late 73, when, when our first record press was delivered, those things weigh about 8,000 pounds, so it's, it's a bit of a monster. And uh, trailer truck pulled up out front and the driver got out and unhooked the 
the front end and said, I'll leave the trailer here, you know, and you can work out how you're going to unload it. And I remember climbing up into the back of that uh, trailer and the machine was down at the front end. And as I'm walking down towards it, I'm saying to myself, my God, what have I done? <laughs> uh, when you have a problem, uh, you better you better know what you're doing. You better know how to fix it because you can't pick up the phone and, and call your local phonograph record repair guy. Uh, ain't no such animal anymore. I was told there are about a total of 14 pressing plants left here in the States. And, uh, and worldwide, not a uh, oh, total of 20 something. So most of them are here. And no one in the world is manufacturing record presses for vinyl anymore. So you gotta take care of what you have. And, uh, we've been in negotiation with uh, a group who have an interest in buying the business. You know, whether that actually happens, of course, remains to be seen. But even if it does, I can see myself being here for some time because there would have to be a considerable transition period. You know, it's not something where you just hand somebody the keys and say, good luck. You know, it would be a disaster. It would last maybe a week. It scares me a little bit about not being here and not doing this anymore. But uh, I'll face that when it happens.